Hello everybody, this is Haley with the Lowell Public Library and today we are going to be talking about watercolor. Now at one point in your life, more than likely, you have watercolored. More than likely when you were a kid. The reason that watercolors are used so frequently is that watercolors are the easiest paint to clean up since they are made out of a water-based solution. The most common things that you will use watercolor on is paper, of course, but some artists have been known to use things like papyrus, bark paper, plastics, leathers, fabric, uh, wood, and of course canvases. Water painting is an ancient form of painting that can be traced back thousands of years to East Asia. In Chinese, Korean, and Japanese paintings are the most dominant medium, as well as places like India and Ethiopia, just to name a few places that have used this throughout history. Now that you know a little bit about the history of watercolor, let me show you some different techniques that you can use to create your very basic watercolor painting. Alright, so for today's example, I'm going to go ahead and just use your basic, simple colors that you can buy pretty much anywhere. Um, this one I got offline, um, but it has your basic reds, oranges, yellows, greens, blues, purples, browns, and blacks. And I'm going to be showing you guys a couple different techniques that you can do in order to try out watercolor. All I do is print this sheet off. It's for like small children to learn how to do their shapes, but it's a good basic beginner kind of thing. I'm trying to wipe off the paint and the water off so that way I can start off fresh. So the first thing I'm doing is a technique called wet on wet. What it means is that I get the paper wet and then I'm going to go ahead and wet down the paint and put wet paint on top. So this is a little bit different than you would do with more traditional style of painting. Um, more traditional is the other type that I'll be showing you in a little bit. But you'll see that I kind of saturate the paper. This is not watercolor paper, so you'll notice that you can kind of see through part of the paper. A reason that you want to use watercolor paper is so it doesn't do that. It's a thicker paper and a better quality of paper. And then you'll see I keep going between water and the paint and just trying to get that nice balance between the two. And then you'll notice when I first put my paintbrush on there, it kind of spreads out. This is what you get your traditional, or I should say more traditional, watercolor is by putting wet on wet. So it spreads a lot more. But what you will notice is that it is a lighter color than the next one will be. So what you'll see is that I'm having to layer it a little bit more, having to put a little bit more effort into uh, putting the paint on there just to get it to be a more saturated color. This is really good if you're trying to use multiple colors. Um, the one big thing if you're using multiple colors is that you need to give time for things to dry in between. You'll see a little bit later that I kind of not messed up but I kind of didn't give enough time for colors to not bleed together um, doing the wet on wet technique. So you'll see as I'm pulling that color, I'm going from my darkest spot to what I want to be my lightest spot. And like I said, it's good to just print out these kind of practice sheets before you dive into using real paper, or you can even just draw out your own sheets just to give yourself some practice space. Because it's been quite a bit of time since I've watercolored myself. So you'll notice that there is a wetter, more um, translucent color to it. Alright, so then on this one, I'm going to go ahead and do the other style which is dry on wet. This is more traditionally used with other kinds of paintings, your acrylic paints and oil paints and stuff like that, where your canvas is dry, or in this case my paper, and you're putting on wet paint onto it. Now you'll notice instantaneously that the paint is darker, it's thicker, um, it's less translucent, and it's faster build. 
I'm still having to go back in multiple times, dipping back into my pan just to get the color to be the color that I'm looking for. But you'll also notice how much faster that I'm filling in this shape because there is more pigmentation. It's a darker color. Now, when you're doing watercolor specifically, it is very, it is very important to remember that you can make things lighter with more water and darker with more paint. Um, other kinds of paintings, more traditional paintings like acrylic and stuff, you're going to add other colors to bring out those. In watercolor, you're just going to keep adding layer after layer after layer, taking pause between the layers in order to not bleed them together. Alright, so I'm going to do the same technique down here, where I'm doing dry to wet. And one thing that you'll notice when I'm doing this square is that you can see some of that green still. I did not wipe off my brush completely, I just let the watercolor that was created kind of make its own color, showing the blending effect between the two colors. It is very important that if you do not want your two colors to blend together, you use new water, new brushes, you make sure that everything is completely clean between the colors, otherwise you will get that bleed through. Because it is a water-based paint, so you will get that picking up in the water, even if it's only the slightest bit of color in that water. And you can also see that I'm using more water than paint here to just kind of show you guys how light you can make colors and how a little bit of paint goes a very long way. You do not need to use a ton of paint in this at all. The less paint, the better, especially when you're starting out. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna write the word love on the diamond. Um, this is the one that I was talking about where I do not take enough time to wait between doing two colors to kind of show you guys how one color will bleed into another color and it will really ruin the effect that you're going for. So I'm starting off with a nice greenish blue color. And then you can see that I dipped into the red color, but it's creating like a gray murky color. Not a very pretty color at all. And then I'm trying to salvage it by putting a little bit of blue in there to just try and create like a nice like purpley kind of color. One thing you'll also notice is how much water I'm putting on really oversaturated the paper so it became very, very thin. Also one reason that it didn't take the color as well as I was hoping. But you can kind of see how the colors aren't really blending together, they're just sitting with each other. This is one big thing to remember. Again, I cannot stress enough to wait between your colors and make sure things are dried. And do not just keep putting water on hoping that it will blend them together because it does not make for a pretty color. You can really see my watercolor is very, very green at this time. Some colors obviously are darker than others. So this is the brown color that I had. And what I wanted to show you is how far one dip of paint can go. You'll notice that the color is starting to fade as I come around. But it is still a very true color. I'm just picking up a little bit as I come back 
you can really see how much paint one dip will get you. Again, a little bit goes a long way and you don't have to have a whole ton of paint on your brush in order to make that color really pop. And then I'm going back through with a whole bunch of water to kind of pull that color to the middle. And you can really, really get to see how much, you know, paint actually went on there and how dark of a color it's becoming and how light spots with just water and that, again, one brush of paint went. I kind of just pressed it to try and get some of the excess water off because it was really, really wet and again, not using the correct kind of paper. So it was really dampening it down so I couldn't get even like the slightest bit of color to move. Alright, and then with this one, I'm just going to go through and kind of just play around with the different styles of painting, a little bit of dry canvas, a little bit of wet on wet, a little bit of everything kind of combined together just to show you guys one last technique of combining the two and just seeing how the two techniques really, really work together and that you don't have to pick one or the other. So, I hope this shows you guys how to watercolor again super simple super easy um very minimal technique um and again this is just a practice you guys can have fun with it and i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and i hope you guys will try this out and i will see you guys in the next video have a great day guys